Hey everybody, I'm Keister here. It is time for day three of my uh, October YouTube palooza, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, um, where I'm basically trying to do a video every day for the month of October. It is actually getting pretty late here, uh, so I'm going to try to record this before the sun sets and I lose all my lighting. So for today's post, I'm going to talk about what I'm scared of. So an important thing to know when discussing kind of like things in this nature is that there's having like a fear and there's having a phobia. So a phobia means that uh, like you actually, it impairs your ability to function on a daily level. So if you're like, re if you're scared of bridges, it might be hard for you to cross them. If you have a phobia, you would actually like drive out of your way to make sure you don't have to cross any bridges or it would cause something like a panic attack or an anxiety attack. Something that actually impedes your ability to function on a daily basis. So I don't really have any phobias per se. I have one that's a little bit close and we're going to kind of get to that later. But I just want to make sure that I'm not saying that I have these phobias. These are just some of my fears. I would actually really love to know what you're scared of. So uh, write it down in the comments and let's have a discussion about it because I think what we're scared of and how that kind of formulates in our brain is super fascinating. So let's talk about that in the comments. But on to me. So, uh, when I think about the things that I'm scared of, I like to break it into three different categories, logical, illogical, and like a guttural, I don't even know where this is coming from kind of fear. So I have two semi-logical fears. The first one I have is heights. Now I know that this is a one that a lot of people have and it's, it's fairly common, uh, but mine is a little bit different. I'm really scared of small heights. So I can like be up in a plane and I'm fine. I could be on the top of like a 40 story building and look over the edge and I'm fine. But if you like tried to make me jump off the back of a school bus when I was a kid, I couldn't do it. I have to sit down and push myself off of the back. Uh, I don't know exactly where this comes from. I think it might have come from as a child. Uh, I was watching uh, a show, Eon Flux, and one of the characters falls from a really small height and breaks their neck. And then the rest of the episode, you just see their dead body there. Sorry, it's kind of macabre. But um, I think that's where it kind of started. Because as I learned about the physiology of heights and falling, uh, if you fall from a really great height, your body will kind of start to release endorphins to deal with the anxiety that you're going through, or you'll just actually pass out. So you don't actually have to deal with the impact, but a small height you do. And that's what really scared me as a kid. So like I was saying before, like I couldn't jump off the back of the school bus when we would do school bus drills. Uh, in drama club, I couldn't jump off the front of the stage because it was five feet was too tall for me. When I was in Girl Scouts, we would do like a low ropes course, which means that there's things where you have to be like up in the air. And I had to do a zip line that was 20 feet in the air. And I just like, I cried and I cried and I cried and eventually I did it, but it was really scary. Um, I learned to kind of deal with my fear of heights by just slowly immersing myself in it. What I would do is I would run, if there was a picnic table, I'd run and I would like get onto the seat and then I would continue to run and I would jump off from where the seat was. And then when I started to get comfortable with that, I would run and I would jump onto the top of it and I would uh, jump off the top of the picnic table, just basically running so I couldn't stop myself until I got to the point where I could comfortably jump from things. It's still really scary for me and I still have issues doing it. Like the first time I'll jump off a picnic table, I'll still like scream a lot because I'm very scared, but I can now do it. So I'm working on that fear of heights. Could I do a zip line from 20 feet in the air? I don't know, but I'm working on it. Okay, so my second logical fear, and this one seems silly at first, but it makes sense, it makes sense. So growing up, I grew up out in kind of the countryside. So what happens is when it gets really dark at night, it got really dark. And the thing I realized is that if the lights are on inside a house, you can see in, but the people who are inside the house can't see you out in the dark. So basically what happened was I have a fear of windows at people height. So not all windows, but if I'm on a first floor of a building or on a floor where someone could be looking in the window at me, 
it's over. <laughs> I'm really scared. Uh, it comes partly for, as I was saying before, it comes partly because looking into a window at, in the darkness, uh, you can't see if there's somebody out there. And that's really scary to me. But even worse is the idea of looking at a window and seeing someone staring back at you. Now, if I'm like up on the second floor and I look out and I see somebody, that's creepy, but I feel a little bit safe. But if I'm like on the floor and I'm looking at a window and I see somebody, that means it's a quick fight or flight response and I just crumble under that pressure. <laughs> so windows of people height were always really hard for me. I grew up in a house that had was on a hill, so I had like double the amount of windows of people height. One of my best friends growing up her house uh, the first floor, people would just, she lived on like Main Street, so people would just come knock on the window all the time, and I would just lose it. It was so scary. <laughs> um, and to this day, I still, if I live in a place that is on the ground level, it's really hard for me. It's really hard for me. Luckily, I've mainly lived on higher levels, but it's still really scary to me. Um, <sighs> I think it came from the One Twilight Zone episode, Nightmare at 20,000 Feet, where William Shatner like looks out on the wing and sees a gremlin messing with the plane, and then like at one point he puts the shade down, and then he opens it back up and the gremlin's face is like smushed up against the glass. It horrifies me to this day, still really scared. And then, and then really any horror movie where like there's a person standing and you can plainly see the window behind them, and you just know, you just know that like, the villain or a monster or something is going to smack up against the glass. I, uh, it's hard. It's hard. I, I, I haven't been able to really get over that one. I just have to deal. Okay. So for my illogical fear, uh, one that I know I'm never going to have to face, but it's still really scary, was zombies. Now this one I've gotten a lot better at, and what it is is basically growing up from my house, I could see a graveyard. If I was out in the yard, if I looked in a certain way, like there was a graveyard that was semi close to my house. Now, my sister, and this is also a little macabre, uh, when they would clean off the graves and like collect all the dead flowers and stuff like that to burn it in the garbage, my sister would sometimes sneak up there and like steal the stuff before it got thrown away or before it got burned. So she would often have like, I remember distinctly, she had like a little satin pillow. It was like a heart shape that she, she told me she had taken from one of the graves. So this was a, this was a graveyard that was very close. Like when I would walk to catch my school bus in the morning, it was there. Uh, so the first time I ever saw a movie where zombies are like coming out of the graveyard, ugh, that's where it started. And from that point, the cultural shift of fast moving zombies just, I was done for. I was not an athletic kid. I could not run. I knew if there was fast zombies, it was over. I wasn't going to make it. <laughs> so, um, so things like 28 Days, 28 Days Later, all of those, even The Walking Dead to a degree, uh, pretty scary. But I've learned to kind of cope with it. What I did was I basically just read a lot of zombie books. Um, I watched like Shaun of the Dead really, really helped with this where it was slow moving zombies, but it was comical and things like that. And I'm actually pretty good with zombies now. I actually enjoy watching zombie movies and things like that. But it was a fear that I carried for a really, really long time. And fast moving zombies to this day still really scare me. Okay. So now we're going to get into my final fear. And this is the one that I think is the closest to an actual phobia for me which, as I was saying, is kind of like, I have a guttural reaction to this. It started when I was a kid and I would see um, natural things that were really intense. I know that's a very vague way of saying it. So let me say it this way. One of the school projects I had to do was to watch mold grow. Uh, so I like had to put a piece of bread in like a closed container in the dark and in different areas and then keep track over keep track of it over time to see how the mold spores would grow and when it got to the point where the mold was getting really really big and i would look at it up close i would start to have this really averse bad reaction to it um and then this only continued so um 
mold like that. If I look at a skull and you look at the areas of the skull where it kind of binds and it's this really windy thing like that, that I have a very adverse reaction to it where I'll get really anxious and I'll feel a little nauseous and stuff like that. When I started having to look at things that were like magnified in, in school and stuff like that, I'd also start to get a little queasy. And then it was all over when the term trypophobia became a thing. So for those of you who don't know, trypophobia isn't a recognized phobia, but it's cited so much that it's become a pretty accepted phobia. And it's basically a fear or an adverse reaction to irregular holes or lots of patterns of holes. So this can be anything from like beehives to coral to looking at like a pancake, like the bubbles on a pancake. Uh, depending on the person. If this is a thing where I'm starting to say this and you're like, oh my gosh, yes, 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 I know what you're talking about. Don't look it up online because if you try to search the term, you're going to get hit with the really horrible ones. The most famous one that went around is about like a toad that like has its eggs in its back and the they hatch out of its back. So it's like all these little tiny holes on its back with like things coming out. I'm sorry if you have this and I'm grossing you out talking about it. But that was the one I saw and I was like, yep, done. I know. <laughs> like I have this thing. Um, so it's not really a fear as much as I know if I see it, I'm going to like my body's just going to kind of shut down. They looked at the psychology behind it and they said it's probably like, you know, it makes sense if you see rot and decay and things like that, you're gonna have a similar situation, which makes sense since I had this bad reaction to the mold, right? So it is a phobia that is based in logic and a lot of phobias are based in logic. People are scared of bridges because bridges collapse. People are scared of heights because you can die if you fall from heights. People are scared of like spiders and snakes because they're venomous and you can die from it. So. The trypophobia is one that, although it is kind of weird and silly, um, makes sense. Uh, but it is definitely one that I know <laughs> I have a mild version of it. I can't look at the tests online that test you to see if you have it because I will get nauseous. You know, sometimes I'll see a thing and it'll just throw me for a week and I'll just be really distraught and upset about it. <laughs> and they even talked about in season seven of American Horror Story. Uh, the one character has it and they kind of dive into it with like coral and then seeing like holes in her skin. Anyway, so those are my four major fears. Uh, heights, small heights, <laughs> windows at people height, zombies, and holes or decay or up close magnification of stuff. It all falls in the same category to me and all just stuff that grosses me out. So those are my four major fears. It's Halloween season. Why don't we share our fears and talk about them and normalize them? It's okay. There's lots of different things to be scared of and it all comes from something. There's a reason behind all of it. So don't ever feel embarrassed about your fears. They're there for a reason. But hopefully you can learn to conquer them and deal with them and function normally. But yes, I am losing my light. The sun is setting as I look at it right now. So that is going to be it for me. So if you enjoyed my video, um, this is a little bit different. This is more like a story time. I don't really do this. But if you like it, let me know. Do all that YouTube razzmatazz and like and subscribe and comment and all that stuff. But that's going to be it for me. Oh my god, the sun is setting and I have to go. So uh, have a good one, everybody. Uh, I hope you face your fears and I hope I run into no zombies tonight. Anya Keister, signing off.